Hello, my name is Top of the Nun, and I'm the developer of Mythic Drops. Today I'm going to be showing you some of the changes that were made available in 6.0.0 of Mythic Drops. First thing first is that as of 6.0.0, Mythic Drops is now runnable from just the jar. You no longer need to download the entire zip just to run the plugin. On startup, the jar will attempt to create all of the files that the plugin needs in order to run itself. This includes all of the tier files, all of the resource files, and all of the configuration files that you're already familiar with. It will also, upon starting up as of 6.0.0, attempt to migrate any of your configurations from the old style to the new style. I'll cover more of that later in the video. However, I just want to show you that all of the files are now available. You can see all of our tiers, you can see all of our configuration files, and you can see that we have all of our resource files as well. Moving into the actual game, you can you will be able to see fairly quickly that a lot of things have changed. If you run slash MD, you'll be able to see a new help page for all of our commands. This is fairly useful because it lets you actually see what each command does, what each argument is, as well as lets you search through the help pages for any new information. In order to see more information, you can type slash MD help, and it will give you the same page, but you will also be able to pass in an, a second argument to see a specific page number. As you can see, there are a whole lot of commands in Mythic Drop 6.0.0, and the commands are there to help make sure that you can actually understand what you're doing. As an example, instead of having mythic drops 5.2.0 style commands where we would have to write slash md spawn followed by a large number of flags to get what we're looking for if we want to spawn a tiered item in mythic drop 6.0.0 we can just type md spawn tier followed by the name of the tier or an asterisk followed by any number that we want such as 10 in order to spawn 10 of a random tier. Notice that because we passed in a wild card, it will give us a, a variety of tiers as opposed to just the one. But if we pass in if we pass in a specific tier such as legendary and pass in 10, we will now have 10 legendary items. Almost all of the commands in Mythic Drops work this way, and as you noticed, all of the commands should have tab completion for just about every option that they have available. Moving on uh, into more into the command section, if you type in a command wrong, so instead of spawn, instead of typing in that you wanted to spawn a socket gem, for instance, you type in md socket. The help the help table will actually show you all of the commands that are available that potentially match that specific command. Uh, in this case, mythic drop socket gems or give gem, spawn gem, and so on. Uh, you'll see in the list there that there are socket gem combiners, and that is actually the, the next feature that I was going to talk about. As of mythic drop 6.0.0, uh, you are able to combine socket gems into multiple brand new socket gems. Uh, this has been a feature that many people have been asking for over the years, and I'm happy to finally be able to show you that it actually works the way that uh, in a way that I hope will be satisfying to most of you. Uh, all you need in order to make it start working is a chest. Place it on the ground or anywhere else. Look at it and type MD combiners add. You'll be able to notice nothing different about the chest immediately until you open it. Once you open it, you'll be presented with a nice graphical interface to help you figure out how to combine your socket gems. You'll see a bunch of iron bars that say click a socket gem to begin. And once you've clicked that socket gem, it will be slotted into one of these top four slots. Currently, the number of gems is not configurable, but that is something that can likely be changed in a future update. Uh, if you haven't already, join the Mythic Drops Discord and let me know your feelings on whether or not we need to be able to configure the number of gems required for socket gem combining. To show you what socket gem combining looks like, I will give myself about 10 different gems and find a couple that match uh, what we're looking for. We're looking for tier 1 gems, which uh, if you look on the 
third line of the item, you'll see family followed by a number. Uh, families and tiers are new additions to gems as well in that they are incredibly useful for helping maintain socket gem combining. You are able to toggle in the configuration, which I will get to later, whether or not socket gem combining requires all of the same family, all of the same level, both or neither. And I will get to what those mean once we actually get to the configuration files in a bit. So now that I have four socket gems, I can open up my socket gem combiner, click my gems, and get a nice pop-up in my bottom slot there that tells me that I can click to combine. And I will then be able to click the socket gem itself and get a response back. I now have a socket gem tier two in the family weekend. Uh, if I try and combine a couple of gems that don't match the requirements, uh, we'll start getting some interesting messages here. But because this is just the default, I have it set to accept any number of gem any gems of this of different families of different tiers, and it will give you a gem of the average of their given level. In order to remove socket gem combiners, all you have to do is look at a socket gem combiner chest, run MD combiners remove, and you will no longer be able to combine your socket gems in that specific chest. Oh no. Because socket gem combining was such a large task, I decided to actually look into improving socket gems as well. So you are now able to provide socket gems into your actual items in a much more natural way. So if I spawn a couple of items that have tiers, just to give you an example, I should be able to have a couple of them spawn with a socket available. So assuming that you are in survival mode, you will be able to pick up one of your socket gems with your cursor, hover it over an item with an open socket, in this case our sword, and right click, and you will be able to socket your gem into your item. This is a brand new change for Mythic Drops that was not possible before. This also replaces the previous system where you would have to right click with the items in your hand and just got very confusing, especially once, once Minecraft added support for offhand items. The same new system also applies to uh, identity tomes and unidentifying, which I will show you here. Pick it up with your cursor, hover it over an unidentified item, and right click. And you will see that the item has been unidentified, has been identified. Uh, so that's one of the biggest changes as well. Uh, Moving on from those changes, there are a couple of other changes within the plugin itself, and those are mostly in the form of configuration. So just to get into that, uh, you'll see that I've got all of my nice configuration files here, and uh, we'll be able to actually look at all of the changes there. Biggest change that you'll notice immediately is that the item groups have been completely changed. Instead of having two very distinct three ish distinct groups, tier, uh, tool groups, armor groups, and material groups. Now there are just item groups. And an item can consist of multiple different item groups and also can consist of only one. So for instance, you'll see that we have sword, which consists of all of the various types of sword. But you'll also notice that we have melee, which consists of all of the various types of swords, as well as axes, pickaxes, shovels, hoes, shears, and tridents. Uh, this gives you a lot more flexibility in how you label your items. It also makes it a lot easier to make socket gems and other things targeted just at a specific type of item. To, show, to showcase that, if you look at the socket gems.yml, you'll notice that there are a couple of other major changes there as well. You'll notice an addition of trigger type for each gem. Uh, what this does is it effectively replaces the previous uh, target type where you would pass, put in armor or armor or tool. 
you can now put in trigger type and it will effectively be a replacement. Whereas armor, uh, it was armor before, just change that to trigger type when hit. Uh, and when it was tool before, change it to trigger type on hit. This will let me make additions uh, in the future to socket gems, such as giving you on sneak trigger types. Uh, you can get a couple of other types on there, such as uh, on death. Um, the, the possibilities are fairly endless there. And if you really feel strongly about it or have some cool ideas on what you want to be able to do with trigger types, join the Mythic Drops Discord and let me know. Uh, you can see that we also have item groups, and this is where you'd start specifying the item groups for your particular socket gem. So you could put in things like armor and then also restrict it to diamond or restrict it to uh, some other group that you create, such as armor and helmet. Uh, or you could also create other sorts of things like light armor, heavy armor, and so on gives you a lot more flexibility in specifying that you want this socket gem to only work with this particular type of item. You can also see that you are able to specify the family and level of the socket gem. This is again useful for socket gem combining where it lets you ensure that you can only combine items of the same family or items of the same level. If you leave the family blank or empty or just don't include it in your socket gem at all, it will be treated as part of the any family, which is just a blanket catch-all family for, uh, for a socket gem that does not have a family. If you don't specify a level, it will default to a level of zero, uh, which will also exclude it from being combined with items with socket gems of level one if you have that particular setting turned on. Speaking of that particular setting, if we look in the socket gem socketing.yml, you'll notice that there are some significant changes here. Uh, I, I won't go into them too much in detail uh, just because they're fairly self-explanatory, but you'll notice that a lot of the uh, a lot of text has been added here. All of the configuration for what a socket gem looks like or what a uh, an item that has a socket available on it or a socket gem combiner are all configurable within your socketing.yml. You can also configure combining to require the same family or require the same level in this file. Repairing has also been simplified. Uh, the repair costs have been moved out into their own file. Uh, the only thing that's really available in the repairing.yml anymore is whether or not repairing should play sounds. The repair costs are practically identical to what they were before when they were in repairing.yml. They're just in their own file now. The relation.yml is still there. It's practically identical. There's no, no real differences here. For those of you who aren't aware, relations are really simply the most basic form of mini set that you could possibly have. If a tiered item spawns with a name with an a part of its name being Glacier, it will also receive this extra line of lore. That's it. That's all relations are. Uh, the language.yml also got a rather significant update, so you may have to go through and update some of your values in here if you customize what this file looks like. Identifying got the same treatment that the socket gems or socketing.yml did and so it's fairly straightforward again fairly fairly self-explanatory there are a couple of things in here that aren't really used at the moment such as uh, these values aren't really used by the plugin other than to be used as variables in the actual lore so you can use basically these prefixes here as, ver as variables. So you can see dropped by here, which corresponds to this dropped by value. Dropped by will effectively be replaced by this plus the type of the entity that dropped it. So if you get an unidentified item dropped by a zombie, this dropped by line will be replaced as the contents of dropped by prefix, followed by the type that dropped it, followed by the suffix, which in this case is an empty string. So this is what that line would be replaced by. 
Same thing applies for percentage allowable tiers, which would, in the event of a item being dropped, get the tiers that are able to be identified from that particular item group and apply that line of lore to the item. So say we had a diamond sword drop and that was only allowed to drop in the legendary tier. You would get a uh, the legendary and the rare tier. You would get this particular message out of that. You would get the, tier, the allowable tiers prefix, rare, followed by the separator, which in this case would be this, followed by legendary again, followed by the allowable tiers suffix. And this would repeat multiple times based on the number of tiers that are able to drop for a specific item. Uh, I don't recommend using the allowable tiers placeholder just because it can make an item's lore incredibly long. And there's no really good way of forcing a line break on it quite yet. Uh, you feel free to experiment with it, f uh, figure out what works for you. Same thing works for the percentage tier replacement. Uh, except it will pick a random specific tier out of the ones that are able to be identified for this particular item and make that the line of lore there. Custom items hasn't really changed much, but you'll notice that there is a the ability to specify a new format for enchantments where you can pass in a minimum level and a maximum level for a specific enchantment, and that will be able to give you a range. This particular one would give us a socket sword with a looting enchantment of either level 1 or level 2. If we bumped maximum level to 3 and then tried to spawn it, we would be able to see that we would get a looting enchantment between levels 1 and 3. Creature spawning hasn't changed much other than that the uh, previous uh, previous field uh, has been renamed to drop multipliers and the name of that field escapes me at the moment uh, but it has just been changed to drop multipliers as opposed to uh, the drop with spawn chance that it was before. Yeah, drop with spawn chance. Uh, it has just been renamed. It's fairly straightforward. It applies the multiplier against the values from the config.yml. Uh, config.yml has gotten a very slight tweak as well. Uh, you'll see that we have all of the, f the fields from it that we were expecting to see, where we have you know item chance, which is the chance that a mob gets an item at all, tiered item chance, which is the chance that once the mob has decided that it's going to get an item, uh, this is the chance that it will get a tiered item. Custom item chance, which is the chance that if a mob doesn't get a tiered item, that it will get a custom item. Uh, please feel free to come into the Mythic Drops Discord server and ask for more information if you want uh, to understand more about how this particular drop chance system works. Uh, if you don't really care or don't want to know too much more, don't worry, it will be changing in a future update to something that makes a lot more sense. And finally, we're going to look at a tier file. Uh, tier files didn't change a whole lot. The biggest difference is that instead of being chance to spawn on a monster, it is now referred to as weight, which is much more accurate to what it was actually doing. For a long time, the chance on chance to drop or chance to spawn on a monster field was actually being used as a weight value. Ultimately, what that means is that all of the tiers had their weights added up. They were shuffled like a deck, and then I would deal a card from the deck every single time I wanted a new. I wanted to generate a new item, uh, but first I would generate a random number between zero and the total sum of their weights. Uh, if you think of it as a deck of cards, you have your cards from ace all the way up through king, and if you assign them a number value based on their various differing levels of value, such as 
ace is one all the way through king at 13, you have a total maximum value of somewhere in the low 80s uh, to low 90s. Um, I would generate a random value between zero and the number of all of those cards added up, shuffle my deck, and then start dealing cards. Uh, if the cards on the table, if their value added together equaled that random value that I generated, that would be the tier that would be picked. So supposing that we have a our nice shuffled deck of cards and my random number is seven and I start flipping cards, the first card that I flip is a two. That card doesn't equal, is not greater than or equal to seven, so we continue. The next card I flip is a three, which does not equal to, is not equal to or greater than seven, so we continue. The next card I flip over is the queen, which when it's, when the queen's value is added to five, puts us at 17, which is greater than our number seven. So the queen is the card that I would pick. This also applies to tiers. And again, if you're confused by my poor explanation, please feel free to join the Mythic Drops Discord and ask for more clarification. Same thing applies to identity weight, uh, but this is used specifically for when you're unidentifying an item. Uh, chance to have sockets is still a true chance, as is chance to drop on monster death. Uh, item types also now have the ability to support the new item group system as well. Um, and since we're in here, I might as well point out that our uh, minimum distance from spawn and maximum distance from spawn um, are the old distance zones set up. Whereas before we had the optimal distance from, optimal distance and maximum distance values. Uh, these are much more sensical and work much more like you would expect. Whereas uh, before optimal distance was the average distance from spawn and maximum distance was the distance from the optimal distance, which let you do bands, but was not a very easy to understand implementation. Having a very specific minimum distance and a very specific maximum distance will make it very easy for you to create the distance zones that you want. And now the last thing that I want to show off is that the reload command actually works as advertised now. Uh, as you saw before, we had a whole list of tiers that were available to us. We had Artisan, Common, Epic, Exotic, Legendary, Rare, and Uncommon. If I go into my tiers directory, create a temporary holding directory, and move all but one of my tiers into the temp directory, and run MD reload, all of my tiers will now actually be accurately represented as just being uncommon. This also reflects in MD spawn, and the only tier that I will have available to me will be the uncommon tier. So this has been most of the changes that were made available in the Mythic Drop 6.0.0 release. If you have any more questions or would like to discuss or just want to berate me for changing the way that the plugin works, please feel free to join the Mythic Drops Discord and let me know your thoughts. Thanks and have a fantastic day.